Good morning. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I have announcements. So there we go. Um, so we are still in need of a board of one board of ed member and uh, vice president. So if you are wanting to stand for that, or uh, if you want the work to be done. And no one go crazy. Think about it, and let uh, if, if you let the voters meeting third Sunday in October is when we have our voters meeting. We can also nominate from the floor. But uh, prayerfully consider those things, uh, or if you want to serve on another board, the other spots are filled. But we can have an election. I'm okay with that. If you feel moved by the Spirit to do that, prayerfully consider that. Uh, and let one of us know. And then I won't have to make you feel guilty in a sermon coming up. Uh, confirmation this week is normal. Uh, we'll have 4 to 5.30 and 5.30 to 7 here at the church. And then uh, next Sunday, we're doing LWML Sunday as we'll mix that in with the texts and things. Uh, and part of that, we'll do the noisy bucket again. And the noisy bucket will go towards the mites for the, the mission grants that the LWML has been, uh, uh, is it every biennium, I think they do so many grants. And there's information on that, and it's somewhere in the back, I don't exactly remember where, but a list of uh, where the, is, and then the congregation will sing the second, fourth, sixth, and then we'll all sing the seventh one together. So they'll, it's in the bulletin, they'll sing one, three, and five, we'll sing the rest. Let's begin with confession and absolution. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart. And confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sins. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this great confession, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
us pray. Everlasting God, you have ordained and constituted the service of angels and men in a wonderful order. Mercifully grant that as your holy angels always serve and worship you in heaven, so by your appointment they may also help and defend us here on earth. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. <laughs> Testament reading for the Feast of St. Michael and all angels is from Daniel chapters 10 and 12. And behold, a hand touched me and set me trembling on my hands and knees. And he said to me, O Daniel, man greatly loved, understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright, for now I have been sent to you. And when he had spoken this word to me, I stood up trembling. Then he said to me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and humbled yourself before your God, your words have been heard, and I have come because of your words. The prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me twenty-one days, but Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I was left there with the kings of Persia, and came to make you understand what is to happen to your people in the latter days, for the vision is for days yet to come. At that time shall arise Michael, the great prince who has charge of your people, and there shall be a time of trouble, such as never has been since there was a nation till that time. But at that time your people shall be delivered, everyone whose name shall be found written in the book, and many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky above, and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. This is the word of the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, all his hosts, his ministers who do his will. Bless the Lord, all his works, and all the places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Glory, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. The epistle is from the Revelation to St. John, chapter 12. Now, no, now war arose in heaven, Michael and his angels fighting against the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought back, but he was defeated, and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. And the great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brothers has been thrown down, who accuses them day and night before our God. And they have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, for they love not their lives even unto death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to you, O earth and sea, for the devil has come down to you in great wrath, because he knows that his time is short. This is the word of the Lord. Saint Luke, the tenth chapter. 
72 return with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. This is the Gospel of the Lord. I believe in one God, the Father and Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, Light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things are made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is spoke by prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come.
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I've given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. When the 72 came back, they were ecstatic. They had been first-hand witnesses to the works of God that peer behind the curtain of this visible world. Like many prophets of the Old Testament, they were given the authority by God to not only speak God's word, but also to do miraculous signs. They were given a behind-the-scenes look at the interaction between the visible and the invisible world. While they were excited, they were in danger. They were vulnerable to relying on their own works, and thus they were at risk of putting faith in themselves and not in Jesus. If you've ever had to work behind the scenes, then you know that much work goes into making something happen. For those who aren't behind the scenes, there is an ignorance and almost a lack of appreciation for the finished product. Right? Things just get taken for granted. They just magically happen. Many don't see the work that goes into weddings or funerals or the children's Christmas program. Many parents don't know the work that goes into teaching a room full of kids, nor do many teachers know the work that goes into being faithful parents in the world today. Consumers don't often know or appreciate the work that's done in the customer service industry. Right? They simply just want their food or their service done promptly and with a smile. This Sunday is a day in the church here, St. Michael and All Angels, where we give pause to give thanks to God for all the behind-the-scenes work of His holy angels. Whether you want to admit it or not, we truly don't understand all the work that goes into protecting and caring for us. But that's not to say that God doesn't need help. He's God, of course. He's almighty. He is all-powerful. We do, however, hear of our Lord commissioning his angelic army to constantly watch over us, to fight for us, to pray for us, to care for us. But before we get too far, we must be careful that when we read the word angel in the scriptures, the word angel is not translated. It's the Greek word, angelos, angel. It is simply just transliteration, and the word itself if we were going to translate it in English, it would be messenger. Angels are messengers. Angels don't have physical bodies like we do, but God does describe some angels in various forms for us to at least begin to grasp and understand what it is angels actually do. We get a glimpse of this in our Old Testament lesson where Daniel is told about God's archangel Michael coming to help him battle and repel the evil angels, or the messengers, or even one word is used, princes, who had come to Persia in attempt to thwart God's good plan for his beloved Israel. Now, if you remember, Israel had been in captivity in Babylon for decades. They'd been taken uh, captive by the Babylonian king, Nebuchadnezzar. This was all part of God's good plan. The Israelites had rebelled against God, they had lost their way, they refused to repent. And so God sent in Nebuchadnezzar in order to discipline his rebellious children and use Nebuchadnezzar to call them to repentance. Fifty years have passed. Now King Cyrus is in charge of Babylon. And King Cyrus is the one who will decree that the Israelites are now free to return to Israel. Again, this is all part of God's good plan. Do you think the devil and his evil minions are just going to sit back and let all that happen? As God himself says in Revelation, the devil has come down to you in great wrath because he knows that his time is short. Recognizing that God's plan for the Messiah is to get Israel out of Babylon and back into the promised land, the devil and his minions do all they can to obstruct and overthrow God's plan. 
But notice how they go about their evil business. They can't win with Israel until they try a different way. They try to come in through the back door of the pagan government. They teach and they spread all kinds of wicked messages, working on the kings and the powerful people of Babylon in attempts to get the government to do their evil bidding. They wanted to prevent the Israelites from returning to Israel. The people were in danger of despair. They were at risk to rely and trust on their own strength, their own cunning, their own works to save. This is why God fights. It's confessed in the very name, as Israel means God fights. Daniel is given a peek behind the scenes. Archangel Michael comes to help fight these wicked angels. He comes to fight the good fight in obedience to his Lord and on behalf of God's beloved children. Michael is also called the great prince, the archangel who has charge over God's faithful. That includes Israel, the 72, and you. This is not simply an individual sense. This concerns entire peoples, all nations. Is it possible for whole groups of people to be tempted to evil? Can entire nations and governments work evil against God and his people? And before we go any farther, I don't want you to take this down the governmental conspiracy room. That's not what I'm saying. We must not confuse evil with, well, I don't like so-and-so because they're jerks, or I don't like so-and-so because they have different policies, or I don't like that guy because he has a terrible haircut. It's not hard, though, to see the evil that has been normalized and accepted over the past decades. What kinds of messages are being sent and promoted in the breakdown of families, in the misuse of the body, the neglect of God's word, the attack on possessions and reputations. Platforms for public office are built on many wicked agendas and no one hardly seems to bat an eye anymore. Many just simply vote for it and move on because, well, it's normal and what are you gonna do about it anyways? As Christians, the temptation is not just to see the evil. See, your temptation is to run into the ditch on the other side of the road. Seeing behind the curtain, hearing the voice of God speak to the reality of your baptism, his death for you on the cross to defeat sin and pay your wage for death preached in your ears, delivered and proclaimed to you through the Holy Supper upon the altar. These things are wonderful gifts that create and sustain faith. The temptation becomes to forget them. It's tempting to think, yeah, yeah, okay, so all these things are all great and all, and they're wonderful, thanks be to God, praise Jesus, whatever. But, but, I want results. I want something that I can do. You're Americans, that's your problem. Right? I want to feel like I'm doing something. But I ask you, do you hear the logic behind this thought? It pushes the reality of faith and the works of God behind your own works. It places hope and strength in what you do, not in what God is doing. Jesus says to you, end of the 72, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, look, I've given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions over the power of the enemy. Nothing shall hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you. Do you hear what Jesus says? You are given the authority by the word of God to tread on the head of the old evil foe, right? One little word can fell him. Jesus crushed the serpent's head in the dust by the work of the cross, and you are given that exact same word. You are baptized. You don't just have a dead, dry, dusty life. You are reborn in the family of God. You are regenerated in the blood of the Lamb himself. His word is in your heart. It's on your tongue. Dancing with life. In the face of death, you have life. In the midst of every temptation, you have the promise of heavenly victory and peace with God. While the world and the sinful flesh loves its barbs and its jabs, its stings and its blows, 
you have the power and the promise of God himself. If death cannot hurt you, what can those blows and barbs actually accomplish? But we don't always see it. The work of God is not always recognized. The focus for you is not to be on the scorpions and the serpents and the wicked world, the evil flow, or even your sinful flesh. Instead, Jesus says, rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Not will be written. Not maybe one day perhaps will be written. Are written. What does that mean? God knows, and he cares, and he saves, and he delivers. You are his beloved children. We must not take all this persistent and increasing evil to mean that somehow God is losing the fight. Jesus told us these things are going to happen, and they're going to get worse. Which means he's coming back. God himself is in total control and he's working all things for the good of those who love him. Just because we don't always see what's happening behind the scenes doesn't mean that his work isn't being done. Elijah couldn't see the work that God was doing in Babylon, raising up Nebuchadnezzar. That would not be a good time for Israel. Yet, in the midst of that wicked and oppressive kingdom, Daniel would live, and through his witness, that kingdom would repent through the decree of its king. What's that story? Daniel the lion's dead, right? They're all supposed to bow down to the king. But through David's faithful witness, what happens after Daniel is removed from the den of lions? The pit of lions. Den is such a terrible word. Pit of lions. The king changes his decree. The disciples couldn't see the work of God as Jesus was hanged on the cross. His death on public display for the world to see his shame. Yet through his death, your sins are paid for. No one sees the planting of faith or the drowning of sin when water is poured over a baptismal candidate. Yet through that very simple work, even an infant is brought into the blessed family of God, declared to be an heir of the gifts given by Jesus through his own death and resurrection. Brothers and sisters in Christ, as bad and evil as things are nowadays, as hard as the devil, the world, and even your own sinful flesh try to wrench you away from faith, from hope, from love, they have no ground upon which to stand. Even if all your daily bread should be taken away, you still have your faith in Christ. No matter how bad and wicked and evil things may get, for us fights the valiant one, whom God himself elected. And take they our life, goods, fame, child, and wife, will these all be gone? The victory has been won. The kingdom, ours, remains. See, brothers and sisters, while the world rages, you can take heart. You have that peace that the world cannot give. Even now, while we pray, come Lord Jesus, we right now live in the assurance of faith. We live trusting, not in what we see, but in what we hear. We trust in God's word that declares victoriously it is finished. We trust and we hold fast to his promise that he is always with us even to the end of the age. We trust and hold fast to his promise that he has put his name on us, that he has made us his own, placing his name upon our heads and our hearts marking us as ones who have been redeemed by Christ and crucified. We rejoice not that we can overcome temptations. We rejoice not that we can silence the naysayers with the word of God, but we rejoice because our names are written in his book of life. And where the world lives in hate, we towards them live in love. Even while the world rages and the sinful nature doubts, brothers and sisters in Christ, today we feast devil has been defeated. Heaven is already yours. The supper of forgiveness stands ready for you. Jesus is here. Soon with his body and his blood crucified and risen. Here we feast. We feast with angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven. While death 
and sin and wickedness abound, we gather in festal holy joy as Jesus brings heaven to earth, feeding us, nourishing us. Here we receive forgiveness for all our sins, and on top of that, we are reminded of wonderful promises. As we eat his body, we know that our bodies too are important, that they have been joined with Christ in the resurrection. As we drink his blood, we know right now, even now, our life is eternal in him. In the midst of our enemies, sin, death, and the devil, God prepares a table for us, and he pours our cup, our cup overflowing with blessings. And we join the angelic choir of heaven with our voices, holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth, which means heavenly hosts, heavenly armies. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Amen. May the peace of God, which truly passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We rise and sing hymn 582. children before you. Give us hearts to trust and depend on you for all our needs. And may we rejoice not that the spirits have been subjected to us through your word, but rather that we rejoice our names are written in heaven. Lord, in your mercy. God, our Father, while we don't always see the work you are doing behind the scenes, you have blessed us to see some of your work through your servants on earth. In your mercy, bless and defend all pastors in Christ. Grant that they would preach the pure law and gospel of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that their proclamation would go forth with power unto the salvation of all who hear and believe. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. O oh God, our Father, we know that Satan and his minions long to assail your children. As we await the day of our Lord's return, keep us steadfast in the faith, and shield us with your word of truth, that we may withstand all their assaults. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, our Father, you have placed authorities over us for our peace and safety. Remember our president, legislators, judges, governor, and all who make, administer, and judge our laws. Grant them wisdom and a desire to seek your will. Guard all those who serve in our emergency services and armed forces. Lord, in your mercy. Loving Father, we give thanks that in holy baptism we receive forgiveness of sins, deliverance from death and the devil, and eternal salvation. Bless those who celebrate baptismal anniversaries this week, especially Kisti, Riley, and Hutch. Grant that by your word and spirit they may faithfully keep the covenant into which they have been called, boldly confess their Savior, and finally share with all your saints the joys of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give thanks for the joy and blessings that you have granted David and Sandy during the years of their marriage. Assist them always by your grace, 
that with true fidelity and steadfast love they may ever honor and keep their marriage vows, grow in love towards you and toward each other, and come at last to the eternal joys that you have promised. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. O God, our Father, remember in mercy all those who call upon you in their need, especially Carmen, Susan, Ruth, Zoe, Donna, Floyd, Tricia, David, Mark, Joyce, and those we name in our hearts. Let your holy angels be with them, that the wicked foe would have no power over them. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. O God, our Father, your Son has told us to receive his true body and blood for the forgiveness of our sins. Grant that we would come to the holy altar in humility and need, receiving this blessed sacrament with thanksgiving. Strengthen us through the same as we return to our homes and contend against the devil of the world and our own sinful flesh. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. O God, our Father, we give you thanks for all who have gone before us in the faith and now rest from their labors. Keep us in holy communion with them, that our ears would join their ears in listening to the heavenly choir of angels sing your praises on the last day. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. For your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, 